just ready to lift your voices? Celebrate the coming of Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. So amazing. So Jesus, our eyes are on you. We're celebrating you. This is all for you, Jesus. We invite your presence this morning. Come have your way, God. See Mary, gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us so from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Heavenly Father, a blessed angel came, and unto certain shepherds are tidings of the same. How that in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Sing, fear not. Fear not, then said the angel, that nothing you fright. Stay is born a Savior, pure virgin bright, to free all those who trust in him from Satan's power and might. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Are you within this place? And with true love and brotherhood, each other now embrace this holy tide of Christmas. All of her does the face. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Sing tidings. No oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh. Come to 
gather in your presence. We gather confident in hope, resting in your love, walking in your peace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, God. We celebrate you. You guys ready to celebrate? Come on, just let that joy rise. Just think about for a moment what it means that God became man. It is, in fact, Emmanuel, God with us. Thank you, Jesus.
Proclaim 
Christmas song for you. They are going to sing Oh What a Glorious Night by the Sidewalk Prophets. So, that's right. <laughs> came to see the baby stood by his mother's side here lay the savior inside a manger oh what a glorious night oh what a glorious night i hear the angels
Okay, so we're going to go ahead and let the kids go back and sit with their moms and dads now. So you guys find them in the crowd. If you can't find them, find me and I will help you find them. <laughs> oh, you guys did amazing. Come on, one more time. Let's let them know how awesome they did. Wow. Very cool. Oh, what a glorious night. Man. I'm going to read something out of uh, a little bit out of Luke, a little bit out of Matthew for just a second here had this idea of uh, midnight clear uh, that kind of I felt was was kind of marking this season and this Christmas and uh, Christmas 2020 you knew it was going to be interesting right Luke chapter 2 starting in verse 8 says that night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby guarding their flocks of sheep suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them they were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. Then the angels went away from them into heaven. The shepherds said to one another, let's go over to Bethlehem, see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste, found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And then in Matthew chapter two, it says, Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. And about that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem, asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time that the star first appeared. 
And he told them, go to Bethlehem, search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them, stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house, saw the child with his mother, Mary. They bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasure chests, gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And it was in, during this, this night, this, I, you ever, anybody ever want to be there at that night to see how it really went down? Anybody afraid it would crush all of your Christmas traditions and expectations and it's like, where's, where's the lights and the snow? And the, <laughs> you know, Middle East in July. I mean, it's, it's just a little different, you know. You know, ex- extended times, it's like we, we picture the nativity and everybody's all there. But, but can you imagine, kids, can you imagine, kids, have you ever been somewhere where it was really quiet? And then some massive sound happens, some really loud bang or something? You know, sometimes I'm sitting in our living room and our refrigerator, for absolutely no reason, goes, oh, oh, man. Or no, you're taking a nap on the couch and the snow plow drops. Or it's something really dark and all of a sudden your parents wake you up. Click. Dads, why do we do this? Time to wake up. It's mean, yes, I know. Sorry, guilty. Can you imagine what it was like on that hillside in the middle of the night, just dark, and angels show up? There's a reason why in there they say, don't be afraid. Do you know why? Because guess what the shepherds were feeling? Afraid. (laughs) It freaked them out. This is crazy. It's this light in the middle. And I was, I was thinking through this dynamic of midnight clear. And, of course, we had a whole series that was going to play out and different things. And, and one thing led to another, and change after change happened. And, and uh, we have one Christmas Sunday that we get to celebrate together. And, uh, and I believe God knows what he's doing. He, he designs it. He plans it. And uh, we roll with it and s- experience the blessings. And this idea of midnight clear, I was thinking about the clarity that we have sometime in the midst of our night. When it's the darkest, sometimes we pick out the, the smallest little things that we never would have noticed before, right? We pick out the, we, when, it, when it's quiet, we hear the quietest little things, the subtlest things. And sometimes when it seems the darkest, which I want to talk about just for a second, is when we have the greatest opportunity to see the light. When it is the quietest, we have the greatest opportunity to hear the voice of God. And, uh, you know, I was, I was thinking through this, this dark light dynamic and Christmas and everything. And, and kids, anybody know what it made me think of? Any guesses? I love having the kids in service with us. It's awesome. What do you think little lights in the darkness made me think of? What do you think? Stars? Maybe? Yeah? Fourth of July in Alaska where you see more smoke than light I remember in Petersburg, and you know, it's like we're gonna we're gonna wait till it gets dark to, you know, July Fourth. So what are we waiting till September? I, I, I <laughs> you climb up and you watch the fireworks. You see the little flashes of light, and you're actually looking at the smoke because it's light out. You're looking out, and there's just there's no contrast. There's just so much light that you can't see the light you're trying to see. You ever experienced that? Yeah, you know, I was I was thinking here. Anybody else like fire? No? I like good fire. 
If you watch the, uh, the, the video we posted last week and, and, uh, or, or followed in uh, when I was in Petersburg, this is one of the things that I, that I talked about. I went to light a Christmas candle because you guys like the smell of Christmas candles? They awesome. I went to light it and normally I'm using a lighter, but I happened to grab a box of wood matches, lit it, went out like this, and I never even lit the candle. I was just like, oh. You know, once the sulfur burn goes away, then I, I smelled the smoke and it, and it brought me, reminded me of my wood stove that I, we used to have in Petersburg. And I just, it was just like this feeling of home and I love the smell and I love, but I love the light of candles, the light of fire. I love a good fireplace. And, and so with, with this light, I mean, if we turned all the lights off in here, you could see it really well. In fact, even right now, you know, put it up against some contrast, look at, look at it up against the blue, right? But then, if I do this, you can't really see it very well, can you? Got that just in time. You can't see it when there's so much light. When there's too much light, you can't see the light you're trying to see. Luke chapter 1, verse 78. This morning, I just want to, I want to remind us, I want to encourage us, I want to challenge us to this Christmas, look for the light, okay? Luke chapter 1, verse 78 and 79 says, because of God's tender mercy, the morning light from heaven is about to break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide us to the path of peace. Jesus came when it was very dark. Okay, now I know we're, we're thinking lights and lights on off. And, and so, so kids, I just wanna, I, I wanna tell you what dark can mean. Okay, I was thinking about this, uh, as, as, I was, as I was thinking about this, this whole light dark dynamic, you know, as grownups, we talk about, you know, it feels dark in here. And we could be talking about the lights or we could talking, be talking about the atmosphere or the mood of what's going on. So dark, dark can mean confusing. Like when you can't find your way around a room because the lights are off and you step on a Lego and it's awful. Or you're trying to find, like I remember bow hunting and trying to find my way out of the woods after the sun had gone down and hearing the coyotes howling. And it's just like, this is not good, right? That was a very dark feeling. Sometimes when we're confused, we refer to that as darkness, right? If we're in a confusing time in our life, we're not sure what to do, it's, it can be called a dark time. It can also be something that's bad, right? Maybe it's sickness, right? Sickness or, or somebody's hurting or injustice or even somebody, you know, there's wars and there's killing. Uh, or sometimes it's just as simple as somebody being ignored, right? It, that can be a dark time. That can be a dark feeling, Right? Dark can also mean hard, like when we lose something, like when we lose someone, right? When we, when we lose, lose a job or we lose a relationship uh, or, you know, kids, you lose your favorite toy. I mean, it's everything from losing your favorite toy to losing a loved one, right? And uh, there's just this, all of those things, they, those are dark feelings, Right? Those are things that sometimes we, we walk through a season where we call that a season of darkness because it, it didn't feel good. It felt, it was hard. It was difficult, right? And there's, there's, there's life is, life is complicated sometimes, amen? And it's, it's hard. I, I want to introduce you to, uh, to somebody that's going to be joining our family today. Right up here. I'd like to introduce you to Maddie Sue. who is uh, going to be joining our family after church today. So this is, welcome to our Christmas present. Our girls are pretty excited. This is Maddie Sue. And the thing is, is coming into this relationship, which we're incredibly excited about, dogs don't live forever, do they? Right? We talk about how, I, I'm so glad they live as long as they do because there is a lot of memories with this little puppy that we are going to be making. And uh, she's adorable and everything. But how many of you guys know that sometime down the road, 
with every relationship, there's always goodbyes somewhere along the line. And it makes for a, a difficult season. And actually, Jesus came in one of the hardest seasons, right? The people of God, God's people, that were looking for God, went, wanting God, inviting Him to come and wanting Him to come, they hadn't heard a word from Him. 400 years, right? Waiting four weeks for a puppy is a long time. They hadn't heard from God for 400 years. They hadn't heard a word until the word came. In flesh, Emmanuel, God with us, Jesus arrived on the scene in a very dark time when people were confused, when people had lost things, when they were going through a, a hard time. The Romans were in charge. They, didn't, they weren't even in charge of their own lives. The Romans were in charge another people group, right? They were their bosses. You know, another thing that can be dark is normal. Just everything that's normal, everything that we do day in and day out, all our normal stuff, it can just be this blank blanket of just darkness. It's just just life. We just kind of go through life and go through life and we just so concentrate, so focused on life that we don't see this light of life that has come. And sometimes we miss things because of there's so much normal in our life that we don't see Jesus. We miss out on some things that are really, really special. Romans chapter 15 verse 13 says, I pray that God, the source of hope will find you will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him that trust love hope joy peace love then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the holy spirit and one of my favorite verses uh, i love isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 it says, for to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on forever. The zeal, the passion the intensity of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. God, the source of peace, hope, joy, love. This is the light that we're talking about. This is the light that is available that sometimes, because there's so many other lights, so many other good things that we see in life, we don't see Him. And sometimes because everything feels so dark, we feel like there is no light and we never look it goes both ways. And let me tell you, 2020 has been a year of, of highs for some people and lows for others. In fact, for, I think pretty much for everyone, it's been kind of a, you know, depending on, the, depending on the day, depending on the week, depending on the mandate, depending on the job situation, depending, yeah, on the amount of sunshine, you know, whatever's going on, you know, there's just, it's, 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 it's up and down. And there's either so much, sometimes it feels like there's so much darkness that there can't be any light, so we never look up. Or there's so much light and good things are happening that that can be sometimes the most dangerous thing because we don't see the good thing that is the best thing. We don't see Jesus. We don't recognize God with us because of all the lights and the good things in our lives. This song that's, that's playing, Midnight Clear, I'm going to read a couple of these verses. It says, It came upon the midnight clear, that glorious song of old, from angels bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold. Peace on the earth, goodwill to men, from heaven's all-gracious king. The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. There's this amazing message of peace that it's not something that we earn, not something that we have to figure out and work for, but it's something that is offered by the all-gracious King. 
God is the one who offers this peace. Now look at, look at the dynamic. I'm going to look at verse 3 here. Let me read this and just listen to, see if this doesn't ring true in life today. It says, Yet with woes of sin and strife, the world has suffered long. Beneath the angel's strain have rolled 2,000 years of wrong. As the angels are declaring this, we're doing our thing down here, and it's, it's not pretty. And man at war with man hears not the love song which they bring. Oh, hush the noise, ye men of strife, and hear angels sing. Hush. Quiet. In the midst of your night, whether that has to do with light or it has to do with sound, a, a voice you're trying to hear or something you're trying to see, hush. See Jesus. He's already come. Emmanuel, God with us. We are celebrating something that has already happened and is active, present, powerful now. And sometimes when you're in the darkest night and it feels the toughest, you have the opportunity for the greatest clarity of seeing God, of hearing his voice. And sometimes when things are going great, sometimes we need to draw the shades a little bit. Sometimes we need to, to dull the brightness of everything that we're excited about and remind ourselves who gives every good and perfect gift the reason that we are alive and breathing and bring our eyes back to Christ. I want, I want to challenge you this Christmas season, whatever your situation is, whether it feels really dark or it feels really light, to look for the light, to find Jesus in the midst of it. Don't miss it because it's so dark and don't miss it because it's so light. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. And this is, this is my prayer. I invite the worship team to come back. It says, I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. And that light, John describes in, in chapter 8, uh, verse 12, John chapter 8, verse 12 says, When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. How many of you guys want the light of life? You ready to see Jesus? But what I want to do as we, uh, as we, uh, kind of prepared to, uh, I want to end this service celebrating what we have in Jesus. But before we do that, I just want to calm our hearts. Okay? So what I want to do, I want to invite you just, you can, you can stay seated for a moment. And I invite you actually, if, if you want to, just, just take a moment, quiet your heart. We're, we're just going to sing Silent Night. Lift your voices or just just if you if you feel like you need to just be still be quiet listen for his voice let everything else just begin to fade away behind the glory of Jesus the glory of God
Jesus, we believe that. Lord of that birth. So we still ourselves before you. And God, I pray that this Christmas season, it would sink in what we have in you. You are the God of peace, hope, joy, love. Light in the darkness. And God, I pray that we would not just keep this message to ourselves, God, but we would share it. We would live it. We would carry it everywhere we go. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just tell him thank you. Thank you, God, for the greatest gift. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand. I want to end this morning with a little celebration. Can we do that? You guys got a little voice left in you? Good, you take it. Come on, lift it up. Joy to the world. And joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room and heaven and nature sing and heaven and nature sing and we will sing joy we will sing joy we will sing joy and joy to the world Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men the songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. We will sing joy. We will sing joy. No more, no more let sins or sorrow grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow as far as he's found, far as the curse is found. We will sing joy, we will sing joy. With truth and grace And makes the nations 
nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love we will sing joy we will sing joy carry that we would walk that out and we would never leave your presence Jesus I pray that you would be at the center of every Christmas celebration this year and God this year as we wrap up 2020 God we just give it to you we place it in your hands we trust you with it we know that you are moving and you are God and God I pray that every family every person God would see the light this Christmas season in the midst of whatever it is that's going on if it's a, a whole lot of great things that's awesome God, I pray that they would, they would be able to still focus in on you. God, if it's a dark season, God, I pray that you would shine all the brighter and you would bring peace, hope, joy, love into this season. We give you all the glory, God. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen. Everybody, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.